So what are we going to do tonight, Professor? Same thing we do every night, Trail. Make marshmallows? No. Make a kick-ass podcast! <laughs> it's Trail 88 and the Chaos Professor. <laughs> okay, don't even try. <laughs> no, seriously, don't. <laughs> Welcome, y'all, to the Railers Podcast. I am your host, Trail 88, and here with me is always the Chaos Professor. Yo. So, today, actually kind of an interesting topic as far as uh, pop culture and media is concerned, and one that I honestly haven't ever seen touched on before, but is honestly talked about a lot, that is fan fiction versus original content. Now, warning, this is only fan fiction, because quite honestly, fan works are a whole nother beast, and quite honestly, we do not have enough time to talk about them. Which is probably why we're going to be breaking this into a multi-part series, and I fully intend on having a sub-series later with Degana Dark, as she has more insight about the Harry Potter genre. We'll be touching on Harry Potter here, but she will be able to go into a deeper level. Oh, yeah. So, uh, this is also going to be your show, so tell us tell us where we're going off with this. Where are we going first? Um, well, quite well, on. Honestly, as much as I doubt it, and as much as I'm sure that whoever is listening to this knows what fan fiction is, let's explain to the viewers out there, yeah, the, view, <laughs> the viewers out there, what fan fiction is. Fan fiction. Fiction. Written about a series by a fan. Written. And not the kind that you have spinning in your grandma's basement. <laughs> okay, I'm okay, I'm gonna have to put up a lame joke counter at this rate. Quite honestly. <laughs> like the Krillin counter. <laughs> yes. And there's our obligatory abridged reference. Also, since several time, several of the previous podcasts we've recorded have not had a fanfic recommendation of the day, mostly because we're recording a lot of these on the same day. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Spoilers! Oh, crap. Anyway, we're going to have a lot of, in fact, fanfic recommendation of the day. This freaking podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to be going to multiple areas, going to be discussing the world and why exactly these fan fictions are better than the original material. Yes. And we're going to be covering multiple topics from video games, books, anime, and just different things of the like. Probably going to be looking up some more along the way. And yeah, pretty much just discuss our opinions on the matter and... Fan fiction as a whole. So, take it away, Professor. Okay, fan fiction has a really bad reputation, and mm. I can kind of see why. I mean, you look at fan fiction, and most of what it is, is, uh, as much as I hate to say it, it's a bunch of wank fantasies. Yes, yeah, and by mostly shameless self-inserts that involve wank fantasies. Either that or uh, an excuse to pair together two people who you know would never get together. Cloud and Sephiroth, way too much of that. Amongst other Amongst things. Amongst others, good lord. But it's an excuse that people use to basically, you know, indulge in their darkest fantasies. That being said, there is a very he massive subsection out of the, you know, mindless crap out there. Mm -hmm. That is well written, it is well done, and quite honestly, is better than the original. That's what we're going to be going on about here. The uh, fanfics that we're going to be referencing are ones that, in our honest opinions, are better than the original source material that they came from. Yes. And uh, I think the best example of that would probably be... Uh, the work of the talented Jay Byrne. He's a uh, fanfic author of Harry Potter fanfic, but don't let you don't let that scare you away. He's also a uh, professional author. Has written some really good stuff. I've only read a little bit of it, but it's so far everything I've read from his fanfic to the little I've read of his original work has been top quality. Check the show notes; it'll be there. That being said, a little bit of a warning: if you do decide to read his stuff, uh, it is. For the most part, not written for kids. No. And that that's one problem is a lot of the people who write fanfic are not kids, so they don't bother writing for kids even if their original series was for kids. Exactly. Case in point being the beginning parts of Harry Potter. Yes. A lot of people start at the very beginning of the Harry Potter series and do it their way. 
unfortunately, that in their way involves a lot of things that just don't make sense. Don't make sense and it's flat out wrong. Yes. Uh, that, like, uh, for instance, one of Jay Byrne's most uh, famous works that I'm really hoping he continues. Please, 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 please. Anyway, sorry, had to get my shameless begging in there in the hopes that he one day hears this and goes, oh, wow, someone begged me. Because <laughs> trust me, I am not above begging for something this good. It's called The Lie I've Lived. It starts off with a very basic uh, principle. Everybody in the house where uh, Harry got the scar left something with Harry. His mother left some sort of protection. Voldemort left part of his soul, and of course, Harry. However, we have nothing from James. Basically, the idea behind the lie I've lived is uh, Harry Potter, when the Dementors try to suck out his soul, ends up, it ends up knocking loose something that his dad did leave with him, his memories. So you have a Harry who is... Uh, Slowly assimilating the memories of James. So kind of an Assassin's Creed, a Sparrow no, thing? No, no? More, no, it's pretty much within the first few chapters he's assimilated them all. And then he's trying to deal with the fact that, you know, he's got the memories of... I think one of the uh, best ways he describes it in the book is, you know, he's... Uh, how did he put it? He's trying to describe uh, something that happened where uh, he... Uh, Something ha I'm trying not to use spoilers because it's a really good story and you should go and read it and I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But uh, he's mad uh, – both of them have a reason to be mad at Lily. But he can't seem to summon up the anger that either of them should feel, you know. Well, he, you uh, know, James he, and Harry? James and Harry. You know, really? Harry, you know, knows that his parents were real people now instead of the Harry we get in the book, which is, you know, venerates them like, you know – saints in the catholic church whereas you know this one he knows that they were real people he knows them personally that they, they had, had their flaws. flaws so he can't you know bring up that vulneration and with james his feelings for lily he's no longer you know just james he can't feel the emotion i want to say the emotion but it's too much of a spoiler but he can't feel the emotion that he's feeling. He can't seem to bring that up. He's an amalgamation of the two. Not to mention the fact that he does something that very few authors do. He completely reworks the Triwizard Tournament, so it's not a complete and utter snooze fest. Now, here's, here's one thing I do want to stop you on. I haven't read it. I'm going to read it, and it sounds like a really good story. But to point out certain things as far as fan fiction are concerned, yes. this is one thing that I like that very few authors do, and even less authors do correctly, is taking something that was a pitiful, pitiful, pivotal moment in the story and changing it. Changing it, yes. Well, one, one, one instance being the Triwizard Tournament. Yes. Nine times out of ten, or even more. More than that. More it's, than it's, that. it's like 99 times out of 100. You in get a, someone to... Make the Triwizard Tournament, and it's the same thing. Exactly the exact same. same thing. I mean, even up to and down to, and right there at, he uses the exact. I mean, you have a time travel story where he goes back in time. He's you know master of a thousand spells, the master of death. He's you know able to kill dark wizards by looking at him, and he still tries to outfly the dragon. Really? Uh, come on, Th that's one thing that just bugs me. Is I don't even think most authors realize it is they're not so much willing to take a risk it's just oh this is part of the story is just as much as the earth is part of the story yeah. so we've got to keep to this story but i'm going to make it how i want to do it uh, the, the, here's my thing if you're going to go back and change something even so much as a person's personality that can change the entire everything how things are chosen i mean i guess one good way to put it would be the butterfly effect yes these are all happening kind of at the same time. Yeah. Why are most of them look exactly the same, especially with so many crazy differences? Uh, as, as much as you know, you're right. At the same time, the butterfly effect isn't, you know, in my personal opinion, isn't as powerful as you think. That being said, you know, I, I can see if they go back and are trying to preserve the timeline. Well, preservation is one thing. Is one, exactly. But it's not so much the butterfly effect because quite honestly, you know, if a person is angry enough to commit murder and they're planning out a big murder and you go back in time, they're not going to spontaneously go, hmm, 
I've been planning this murder for 10 years. I don't want to murder anybody anymore. That's how the butterfly effect tries to make it. Mm. But, and that's what people use as an excuse of the butterfly effect. No. That being said, a person going back and, you know, is like, hmm, I'm going to change every single thing I touch, and yet somehow it's all going to end out the same. That's playing the destiny and fate card a little too heavily. Yeah, way too heavily. Anyway, my tirade's over. Back to the point. Back to the point. The lie I've lived, I like how he does it, you know. He makes his characters believable. I mean, the uh, headmasters of the other schools in the Triwizard Tournament, you know, they're kind of like, oh, you've got an extra guy. I guess we'll go along with it. Whereas in The Lie I've Lived, the, I the idea he had that I really liked is they're like, nope, we're going to get our own extra champions. And we're going to add a whole bunch of different tasks. You know, We're going to mix and match you're however gonna, we do it. You're going to pull the rug out from underneath our feet? Okay, I'll burn the house you're in. It's something like that. So you, in, it, it's not really a Triwizard Tournament in The Lie I've Lived. Well, like the Hex Wizard Quadrafest. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I don't you know. know. It's... Uh, You've got six wizards, each doing – I think there was like six or seven tasks. Each task has something special about it. The characters are all believably written. I mean, you know, when one character gets badly hurt, you're actually emotionally invested enough in that character that you actually care what happens to her. As compared to you've seen every other – you've seen the movie, you've read the book. Oh, I have known about this much about this character. She just got hurt. Okay, turn the next page. That's kind of like uh, uh, going back to uh, canon. Uh -huh. I mean, there's some kid with the last name of Entwistle. I don't even remember his first name. I think it may have been Kevin. But anyway, quite honestly, anybody who knows anything about this character, please raise your hand now. All right, now all of you who raised your hand and don't actually know, please put them down. All right, now all of you who are incredibly... You know, super over-the-top Potter nerds, you don't count. How many hands do we got raised? Probably a hefty zero. Exactly. I mean, you know, the, the problem is in canon, you know, the, the authors, I mean, you have to give them props. They created a world that's fun to play in. Exactly. The problem is a lot of authors, especially on series that go on, I mean, you look at uh, Naruto, you know, in, in some respects... The world kind of peaked in the first story arc. Very true. And since then, it's just been kind of up and down on a downward scale. Yeah, honestly. And, uh, or you look at, say, uh, Ronma One Hat. Love the series. It was a great series. But for the love of God, nothing ever changes mm -hmm. i mean after we've got the principal characters introduced and i understand it's a comedy series episodic comedy the whole point is they're trying to go sort of you know slow kind of keep it the same so we can you know do these different jokes over and over again but at the same time nothing ever changed and that's one thing i like about fanfic Mm -hmm. Fanfic is – it's not really bound by the rules. Mm -hmm. You know, if a certain character is going to act a certain way in canon, fanfic has every right to go, hmm, I'm going to throw that out and introduce another element instead. Exactly, and that's why I honestly – in most stories that I read, I look for ones specifically that have original characters in it with OCs. That being said, I like it when the OCs don't interact with the main characters. Oh, I don't mind the OCs interacting with the main characters as long as they don't steal the show. Exactly. And, and that being said, even show-stealing ones, I mean, you know, uh, I, one of our uh, reference, one of the last time, wasn't it the last time? I that think it was we the did, first episode. First episode, we uh, did a shout-out to Yet Again with a little extra help. Yes. That was good, had some decent OCs, and it just, for me... It, it was really good, but it just – it took a little long to get to be about the characters. Yeah. Otherwise, it's all about – you're hearing about the OCs, and while they are awesome, it's mostly about the OCs and you're just, the main characters in the background becoming as awesome as them. Then you get introduced into the – what the real and, characters are. And then once they become you know, apparently awesome enough for this author's standards, then they're introduced. Yeah. And, you know, once he gets into it, it's a really good story. I mean, I like how he did his story. 
True. It's just it took him forever to get past the OCs, and even then they were stealing the show in every other scene they were in. Very true. That being said, there are some fics that are better because of all the OCs. I mean, there are some fics where, uh, especially, you know, the certain type of fic where you take a character, uh-huh. pull them out of their series, and stick them in a totally different situation. There have been some really good ones. I believe uh, the first episode I also referenced Hell Eyes. Yeah, yeah. Hell Eyes is a Harry Potter fanfic where he's basically yanked out of his, you know, regular world, out of the world of wizards and muggles, and put into this sort of high fantasy world with, uh, you know, winged humans and uh, sort of, you know, beast men, yeah. dryads and gods and goddesses. And the whole thing is, you know, one big uh, adventure for him trying to find out... Uh, so you threw him in D&D. <laughs> Uh, not quite d and I mean, I have to give the authors props. They created an excellent – quite honestly, if I can get in touch with them, I'd more than be willing to see if they'd allow me to sort of make a pen and paper version of their world. Hmm. But they created their own world. It has their own pantheon. It's got its own lore. And it's not just shoved at you like some writers. Cough, 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 Lionheart. Yeah. It's actually – throughout the story, it comes naturally – yeah. The whole uh, thing. I mean, they don't, you know, Harry doesn't appear in this world and they start telling him everything he needs to know. He's not mm. handed a book called Primer to the Universe. Yeah. He finds out about it through the entire mm. thing of the story. And another couple of good ones, uh, Guardian and Millennium. Guardian took Ron Masaltome and totally divorced him from his original series. Uh, basically, he uh, got out of Narama. He uh, got out of all the trouble he was in with all the fiancés and stuff. And he decided, you know, he was going to do some good and join the police force. And from what I've read of the series, because I remember you told me about this way back then, I actually started reading, I kept reading, and it was an awesome series for as long as I read it. I mean... Not to mention the fact that, you know, it's got its own OCs, yes, and they do sometimes steal the show. Ron was still the main focus, but the OCs, rather than, you know, being something that disrupts from the story by stealing the show from the main characters and, you know... Be, you know, being a little bit Mary Sueish, his OCs actually add to the story by giving Ranma a believable cast to interact with. Exactly. I, I guess that's another reason why I like um, fan fictions of that nature, where you have the main character removed either by choice or by will away from his, away from his natural habitat and put into a different area. Because of that, you're able to see him actually grow without having to deal with the tropes and the everything else that is limited to his world. And mostly to not to have to deal with all the fans and especially fan, you know, uber fan, you know, squee fangirl fanboy type. So yeah, you go, you know, oh my like god, that. you did something, you know, that they wouldn't do in the original series. I don't care if this is fan fiction, you're going to hell. I mean, seriously, the, the whole point of fan fiction exactly, is to do yeah. something different. Exactly. I mean, people who, okay, I, I like to classify, there are several different classifications of fan fan fiction ears. I, yeah. I don't know the quite term for it. Um, I don't know, I don't, I can't put a number on it, but yeah. let me tell you this. There are purists who take the story and then change like a little bit about it in order to make it more interesting. Like changing one facet just as a what if. Yeah. That and means... seeing how that one ripple in the pond would change the overall scene. Although I wouldn't exactly call those purists. Purists are the guys who decide to basically rewrite the story. And basically the way they do it is if you change anything from how it was in the original story – you're, you know, in their eyes, a horrible person who ought to be burned to death. Yeah. And really, you know... But what are they doing? They're pretty much rewriting the story. I mean, there's like, I'm going to change this so this was instead of this. It's like all those fix where it's like, hmm, I'm going to change Harry or Naruto or Ranma or, you know... A, a, you know uh, Main character. Ichigo or whoever you like for your main character. I'm going to change it so they were born the opposite sex. And then pretty much retell the exact entire story with oh. nothing changed. I mean, seriously. The only thing is slightly different is maybe the dialogue. No. Even the dialogue is mostly the same. All they'd really change is the pronouns. It's like, seriously, if I wanted to read the book with opposite pronouns, I'd, uh, pull, the bo- I'd pull the book up on my PDF reader, do a uh, replace. All he's with she's. And I'll basically change all... Uh, He's 
to uh, she's with an extra space, then change all she's without that extra space to he's, then change all the she's with the extra space to she's without an extra space. Yeah. Which is basically change the pronouns around, which is what some of these authors do. That being said, that's on the bad side. Yeah. However, there's also um, the ones that totally break the bank. They, to- they just go in and they're like, hey, here's a fun world. Let's burn it and just do crazy stuff. And honestly, for the most part, that crazy, unadulterated chaos that comes with these figs, I honestly think they can be better. Sarah, uh, I think it's 1281, 1821, anyway, something, something, like, something that. like that. She She's written several that have been, you know, really good at taking a universe and sort of, you know... It's like everybody else takes the universe seriously except her main characters. <laughs> and that's what I really like about it. I mean, for, it's for a good cause, I swear. Basically, it's a deconstruction of the time travel trope. Mm-hmm. You know, most time travel things like, I've got to go back in time and save the day. In this one, it's, hey, guys, we're all bored. Life's pretty good. I found this time travel skill, this time travel jutsu. Who wants to go back in time? That's reason enough for me. I mean, that that will be fun. Why not? Let's do it. And what they don't know is they all end up in the same time. So they encounter each other. So pretty much they're all back in time, you know, changing time left, right, and center. And, you know, they're all like, you know, what are we going to you know, say? is like, why didn't we tell anybody we came back in time? Seriously? What was the point? What are we going to do? You know, they're going to be like, what kind of catastrophe caused you to come back in time? And we, what would we have to say? There wasn't a catastrophe? We were just bored? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so if you like Naruto fanfic, I highly recommend that one. Uh, Datapad Diaries. It's a uh, novelization of the uh, game Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. And, oh god, it is awesome. It's got a uh, sort of cynical uh, main character. A cynical shepherd who, quite honestly, doesn't really believe in the Reapers and everything. She looks at it as, you know, it's all a giant hoax. And the absolutely hilarious thing is, uh, you know, she pokes fun at the fact that it seems in the game a little bit too easy. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's like we hate your species. We don't believe you should be allowed on the council. You're untrustworthy. And yet you brought us, what, a testimony that you saw someone who believed that the Reapers exist? Obviously the Reapers exist. And we're going to all have to work together to, you know, stop them. So you're now on the council and our special agent. And, you know, main character's like, what? I mean... mean, What you talking about? (laughs) I mean, yeah. The whole... When explained in that level of bluntness, I can easily see how that would be, well, believable from that point of view. Yes. I mean, a lot of... that's, That's another thing that I do like about fan fiction the good ones, at least, raise points of discontinuality. Well, what's the word I'm looking for? Discontinuity. Discontinuity within the series. And I gotta say, the biggest the biggest offender of this by far is Naruto. Yes. There's so much wrong with that series. However, because there's so much wrong with it, it allows people to take the elements that's been given to them in this world and ex- either try to explain it or redo it a certain way because it's all very flexible yes. in its own way and that's one thing that I do like about the fan fiction universe it gives you a chance to and one reason why I like OCs but sometimes even more so the original characters or the uh, canon characters yeah. um, do it they explore the world outside of the rails that they've been given yes in the, the in uh, oh, what one, what I like I haven't found good very many good um, fan fictions of it, and I had to look up the names because I can't remember. Yeah. But I love Pokemon fan fiction when done correctly. Yes. Because and more quite often honestly, than not, it doesn't follow the anime or I the specific, manga. And quite manga. honestly, even if it does, it just it kind of pushes it a little hard. Yeah. I've read very few good Pokemon fan fics that weren't Nuzlocke's. That being said, there have been some that just kind of blow it out of the park. Exactly, because they can come up with justifications for doing the whole Nuzlocke. Yeah. But the reason why I like the... Uh, not just Nuzlocke's. I mean, I, I've seen some that blow it out of the park that had nothing to do with exactly. Nuzlocke's. But the reason why I like the open world feel of it is because it's 
a it's an extension of the author, the good ones. Yeah. What would they do in this world? I mean, I'm working on a fan fiction right now that's a shameless self insert, I admit. But the point is, what would I do in this world for Naruto? What would I do to just hey, I'm in Naruto verse right now. I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna see how this works. It also gives me a chance to explain my theories on the in-game in game the story's content not and to mention the fact that you know with the fix you there you have such a great world to play with you don't have to be afraid of making these mistakes i mean quite honestly i have read exactly two things in my entire life that were ever done in second person well three things if you count the fan fiction sequel one was a uh, really weird book. It was good, but I, you know, it was hard to read because the author who wrote it looked like they had written it in third or first person and then just tried to change it to second person. But uh, Jay Byrne, the guy I was referencing before, professional author who uh, uh, went to that after he had done or fanfic, and he's still on and off doing a little bit of fanfic. But he wrote a. Uh, story called Bungle in the Jungle, and that's written in second person. Now, second person is not only the hardest to write, it's also the hardest to read. Mm. The first couple of times I got turned off because it was second person, it was a little bit hard to read. Now, because the, I'm not 100% the smartest person in the universe, a second person is it says, you do, yes. you, okay, yeah, so like, first choose person, your own exist. First person is I, second person is you, third person is they. Yeah, so a choose-your-own-adventure, but with a set yes, storyline. set storyline. Yeah, okay. I and, thought so, but I was making sure. And as much as, you know, everybody disses on second person, and I'll admit it's pretty hard to read, but if it's done right, it has the greatest emotional impact. Very because true. Because if it's written enough that a person can relate to the character, it adds a level of immersion you don't see in any other writing style. This is very true. Because, and... you know, if, if, the, if they can relate to the character that deeply it they'll actually sort of feel you know it's like you know when you're in a dangerous situation in the story it's actually it feels somewhat like you are actually in that dangerous situation now admittedly it depends on how immersive of a reader you are but that can add a level of not only uh, complexity but also a level of emotion to a story that you really – it's hard to get anywhere else. And it may not be the best example, but one thing that did it correctly as far as I'm concerned is the Choose Your Own Adventure series, which I wish – honestly, I wish there were good enough authors out there. They could make more of those because Choose Your Own Adventure is yeah. a great medium for second person. Yes. And I can't tell you the amount of books that I've read and just – it felt so invested because, oh, this happens to me. Oh, this happens to me. i got to find out what I do next. And it does give you a certain level of choice. Now, the entire story is written in second person, not the same way, but still, I totally agree. Yeah. It gives you that level of investment. It gives you this new level of uh, – what's the word? And into the seat with – you are yourself the character. Yes. And again, it comes down to uh, when you look at it, the uh, reason that it's not done more is, you know, the reason we don't have more Choose Your Own Adventure books is it is a hard style to write. And professional authors don't want to do it mostly because that's putting yourself out there. And, you know, when you write that, you've got to do it just right or the thing will fall flat. And Very no true. one wants a bunch of failures on their record. No. That being said, Fanfic authors, you all you need to do is make up a name, use someone else's world so you don't even have to do any work, and just go at it. If you mess up, well, who cares? You can delete the story. Very true, and, uh, and if, if it's getting bad reception quickly, you can delete it before any real damage is done. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this first episode. We will link all of the referenced, uh, all of the referenced fix so far, and we'll pick up next time. With uh, a few more points, maybe I'll get to talk a little this time. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. And uh, we can talk about um, 
favorite fan fictions, honestly. Ooh, favorite fan fics. As Give well. Give me an hour or two to think of, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a list and I'll start reading them rapid fire. I might be done in two hours. Fine. But uh, cover favorites, worst experiences, things to avoid, and maybe some ideas to, on if a person wanted to become a fan fiction writer, maybe the do's and the don'ts. The secrets of writing fan fiction. It's almost exactly the same as the secrets of the universe if you happen to live in the world of Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, this has been Drill88. And Professor Chaos. And we wish you all good night. We wish you all good night. We wish you all good night. We wish you all good night.